Hello everyone and welcome back. So, let's try an example with this. This is a quick one, so we'll just do it together. So we have a ball and it strikes a smooth ball, sorry, smooth wall with a velocity of 20 meters per second. Now the coefficient of restitution between the ball and the wall is 0 0.75. What do we want to find? The velocity of the wall after the impact. Just kidding, the velocity of the ball after the impact. So how are you going to do this? Well, it's an oblique impact, so there should be some equations that you can use, maybe four of them. Also, you know the final velocity for the wall. You also know the initial velocity for the wall. It's zero. It doesn't move. So use all this to solve this problem. And I hope it helps. So with no further ado, actually, you know what? I'm going to make you do this on your own. Go ahead, go ahead and try it on your own. Go. Go do it. Pause right now and do this problem. So three, two, one. You paused. You did it. You rocked it, hopefully. Maybe you didn't. Eh, either way, we're going to do it together. So let's try it out. So first off, we're going to use these x, y axes that have been found right here. This is usually the best one to do it. That x axis going along the impact line and y axis in the plane of impact. Now, we know the momentum of the wall, sorry, the ball is conserved in that y direction. It doesn't change. So its velocity in the y direction was 10 meters per second beforehand. It's going to be 10 meters per second afterwards. We also know what the coefficient of restitution is, and so we can then solve for the final velocity given my initial velocity, but only for the velocity in the x direction. So if we plug everything in here, we get, okay, velocity b, 2, cosine of this angle theta, and then 20 cosine of 30 degrees over here, that's the initial velocity, and 0 both times for the wall. If you're wondering why it's negative, it's because I switched directions. I'm no longer going in the same direction here. It's going backwards. Now, with that in mind, you're wondering, well, why do we have theta here? Don't, isn't it 30 degrees? Isn't it going to be 30 degrees again? It won't be 30 degrees again. It won't be 30 degrees again. Now, the reason for that is quite simply that the x velocity, sorry, um, yes, the x velocity is going to change. And so since y velocity stays constant, but the x velocity changes, the angle has to change. Think about it like it's a triangle. The triangle is like this to begin with. This is the x component, this is the y component. The y component is going to stay the same afterwards. So the x component is going to be smaller. So obviously that's going to be a different angle. Okay, different angle there. It's not quite theta there, but good enough. Okay. Now, you also notice that earlier, the velocity afterwards. We only knew um, we knew what the y velocity component was, but we don't know what the overall velocity was. So by putting it in terms of theta, we have two terms right here, both of which have theta in it. And since we don't actually care about theta right now, we can just take the magnitude to get rid of those. If you're wondering what happened to the sine of theta and cosine of theta, remember that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So that disappeared. So we get 16.4 meters per second. Once we know that, we can then take our components and figure out what theta is. Okay, so that's it for this example. Thank you so very much for listening. I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.